Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Roster. We are diving down a yellow rabbit hole looking at sales as a function of problem solving. To do that, we are joined by Jared Best Mitchell. Now, Jared facilitates entrepreneurs and companies growing their business to position them as the go-to for their respective industries, and we are happy that he is making the time. Welcome, Jared. Thank you for making the time. And we need to start off. What is the deal with the yellow? You see, I, I keep in your company, right? <laughs> I saw the yellow tie immediately and I loved it. And fun fact, one of my first yellow ties was a similar design like that. So as I explained to person, yellow is not a brand color for me. I've liked it since I was five years old. When I was put into Rosie Boys when I was in primary school, the house they put me in was Savio. And from then, I just said my favorite color was yellow. And because I'm an entrepreneur now, I'm fortunate when my boss says I have to wear yellow every day. So it really works out well for me. So everything that I have around me is yellow. It's not a, it's not a um, joke thing. It's like okay. every single day, 24-7, 365, I only wear yellow. It, okay, it but I know some people, happy. When, when we've spoken to entrepreneurs, they say that this life isn't for everybody. So take us through briefly your entry into entrepreneurship, thanks. Oh, well, that's a fun thing. I became an entrepreneur by accident. So I was working in Samsung as a sales manager for Samsung. And on the start of my third year there, I remember, this is at the start of 2019, I remember telling the merchandisers and other people on the team that it was probably going to be my last year because I have a short attention span. And I told them I was probably going to look for another job because if I don't feel challenged, then I need to leave and find something else. And... Lo and behold, Samsung themselves is making changes in the region. So they closed the physical office, offices down. So in September, this is when we got the news. And the date of when the last day of, of the office being open would have been the day after I made my three-year anniversary there. So I saw it as a sign to say, okay, I've been getting a lot of requests through LinkedIn, where I spend a lot of time on for more information and, and to come and talk to people's sales teams and sales and, and train. So I said, let's, let's have some fun and do this. Now, in terms of, and I like the fact you talk about LinkedIn, because I want to ask about navigating digital platforms. And this is like optimizing time, focusing efforts. What is that process like? Well, I could only speak on LinkedIn. I can't speak for any other platform. That's why I spend a lot of my time on, and I, I train people on LinkedIn and other stuff. But I spend a significant amount of time because that's where my ideal target market is. So I concentrate a lot of my time. I put out all my content there first. And that's why I spend a lot of my time engaging. So the only thing I would tell you is you must have a digital presence and it should not be social media, actually. It should actually be your website first because that is where I got found a lot. I have my website, but LinkedIn is also search optimized really well versus Facebook or Instagram. So I spend my time primarily on those platforms. So it is ridiculously important in today's day and age to have that digital presence because I think a lot of businesses underestimate how much trainees are actually searching for what their business does. They might not have your name, but they're searching for the general topic. And if you aren't putting your presence out there for them to find it on Google, which is where they start first, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. And Expand on that a little bit for me, please. And in terms of having where it is you put yourself digitally, and you spoke about social media versus your own website. I know some people call it an earn the platform versus an own the platform. Can you make that distinction for me a little bit again, please? Yeah, and I, you pay my utmost scope because even though I do it, I don't teach it. But just to give you an example, Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, as they say as well, TikTok, all these other things, uh, uh, you don't own the platform. So in other words, if they decide to change how they operate to the algorithm, which is, for example, what Instagram is going through a lot these days, you're going to get a lot of backlash. Whereas on your website, you can control what people see, when they see it, how they see it, because it's your website, it's your domain. And if you put the right, um, I would say, say measures, that's the best word I could describe it as, when people are searching for it, you would pop up in the top searches. So once you do it right, it, it happens. Uh, what, is the, what is the thing that you find most appealing about LinkedIn? Because I know some people might say, I, I just got onto it, and right now I'm not really posting or any doing anything with it. But it seems as though 
there are much more possibilities with LinkedIn than someone who just said, okay, well, I'm signing, I have a profile pic, and I have some information about myself. What is the major appeal for LinkedIn to you? LinkedIn is the world's largest B2B platform. So there are about 800 million, 810 million users worldwide right now. Um, Trinidad and Tobago has about 440 to about 460,000 users. The thing about it is, is that a lot of the decision makers you, find on link, you can find on LinkedIn. It's extremely powerful if you do business to business transactions. And even if you do business to individual transactions, it's just as powerful. So, and by the way, LinkedIn starts off as a job searching platform. So a lot of people are on there now, especially given the times that we're in looking for jobs. So optimizing your profile is key, which is something I help people with. And that alone can actually get you a lot because let's put it, let's put it this way. And I'll start with them and I'll go back to businesses. As an individual, if you're job searching, and you submit your resume, recruiters are going to Google you. When they Google you, LinkedIn will probably show up first if you have your LinkedIn profile. And if your LinkedIn profile is optimized, then you add a more digital texture to what you have versus just the two pages that you submitted as a resume. Because your LinkedIn profile can tell a lot more about you than a two-page resume. So it works really well to your advantage. And for anybody who's listening to this right now, Last time I checked, which was two days ago, there are over 6,700 job vacancies listed on LinkedIn for Trinidad and Tobago alone. So anytime people tell me they can't find a job, I tell them you're not looking for a job. You seriously aren't looking because there are opportunities out there and LinkedIn has it a lot. And a lot of people are being hired and found by recruiters there. Now, if you're a business, this is the picture I want to paint for you. If decision makers are on LinkedIn and you are not posting, your competitors aren't posting, who's influencing those decision makers with regards to what they buy for their organization? And that's what I spend time helping companies with. Because if you're able to create your content and put a presence on the platform, then you get to influence. Because a nice statistic to tell everybody is about 57% of the buyer's journey is actually done online and without interacting directly with the company or a rep. And that is local and international as well. So it means that before somebody even reaches out to UDK, they have actually done their research online. They have looked at things to a certain extent. They have probably looked at your, your any social media presences they have. They looked at your LinkedIn page. So for companies who just have a presence, they're actually losing out on an opportunity to really be in front of their customers' face in a non-salesy way and to influence their decisions so that they don't even look at their competitors. They come to you first because you're putting out content that speaks to how their problems are solved and how you can help their problems, how you can help solve their problems and therefore you're positioning yourself as a thought leader or the expert in the space. And I really want to talk about how individuals can interface with you even before you all start to speak. And I like that term in a non-salesy way. We'll get into that when we return from this break. We're speaking with Jarrod Best and Mitchell. Stay with us, we'll return with more. Welcome back. We are diving into the ins and outs of, and, and say specifically LinkedIn at this point in time with Jared Best Mitchell. And just before we took that break, you were talking about being able to create content that persons can interface with even before, say, reaching out to you because they've done their homework, they've done some searches, and they like your product. So creating content, what does that content look like? And and speaking specifically to the LinkedIn platform, because we know that, okay, well, one digital platform, say like Instagram, they'd be more, it'd be more image heavy. Another one, maybe more text, some maybe video. What kind of content are you talking about when you think about LinkedIn? LinkedIn has a couple of primary forms of content. The most popular type of content is text-based content. Um, right now, based on my analytics, including a couple of others, text and image content really perform exceptionally well video gets a lot of engagement which is different from the views that a text-based post might get and then of course you might look at other aspects for example like if you do carousels so you might want to produce like a white paper or information which regards their products and services so linkedin actually gives you several ways including doing going live as well where you can interact with your audience and actually provide information and 
does organic versus paid come up as a, as a, as a thing? Because I can see some people saying, no, oh, man, I like my it. thing. Each one reach one and just have stuff happening organically by word of mouth versus saying, I, I feel kind of like a fraud if I paid for this thing to bump up. How, how does that play off in, in, your, in, your, in your ruminations? I'd have, been, I'd have been with my close to this one. LinkedIn and TikTok are the only two platforms right now with the largest organic reach. So if you produce content, it's going to be seen by not only your ideal audience, but people who you weren't targeting and making them aware of how awesome and great you are. Presently, to date, I have 775,000 organic views of my content on LinkedIn for the year. Last year, I did 1.2 million, which means based on this forecast, I'll probably end on 1.5 organically. If you want to run ads, fine. It's an expensive platform. If you're running an event that you want to pitch to a particular audience, LinkedIn is perfect for it because you could run ads specific to somebody's job title, country, location, etc. Like one of my business partners, we ran an ad campaign for a client and targeted the entire country of Bahamas within 24 hours of who was on LinkedIn. So you don't need to, you don't need to, to run ads you don't need to pay for ads if you're really good at producing content whether it's written video imagery you would actually be able to find your audience especially if the content that you're putting out speaks to the problems that your customers are trying to solve i, I like that no that statement plus that beard is something like a guru now eh, jared but in terms <laughs> of saying problem solving i want to ask about the role of curiosity and this is even tagging back to that non-salesy way the role the role mm -hmm. of curiosity in sales and as a function of problem solving that clients would need what what is that from where you sit so uh, let me go back to you i'll go back to your word salesy because that's the thing a lot of people make the error with i put out a lot of content but as i explain to persons I design my content in a way to take you along the journey of becoming interested and curious to reaching out to me and becoming my customer. And I mean it in the sense where I answer so many questions. It's like if we were already having the discussion, but it's online, so you don't have to interact with me. But majority of the people, last time I checked, was around 90% of my business is inbound. So in other words, I don't make outbound calls. People call me, and when people call me, they're at the buying stage. I do not have to explain what I do because they understand it. The meeting is actually to get context of how I could solve their specific problem. So that's how you avoid being salesy because if I understand what people's problems are, I don't need to speak about my, my solutions. I don't need to say, Jared does this. What I need to tell you is how you could solve your problem because two things happen. One, the person will either reach out to you to get it solved or two, they could solve it on their own. And the interesting thing about it, only 2% of people actually solve their problems on their own. The other 98% eventually reach out to you because you're the only one who's putting out the information to help them solve that problem. And is it a matter of trying to be a specialist or generalist in terms of saying, okay, well, this is what I do, and I'm going to have a niche as opposed to trying to be all things to all people, even if you're thinking about the content that you have on your page? Yeah, well... Anybody, so I, I keep seeing that mistake as well, DK, um, specialists. Like, if, and here's the reason why that a lot of people don't think of. Let's just say, and we could probably use this screen that we're looking at, that the audience is looking at, right? You want to be a specialist on the whole screen. So in other words, you want to be, I got in yellow, I got in red, I got in purple, the white banner, and that's too much to everybody, so they don't know. Because honestly, some people are just, their issue is just the in-depth logo area. But the thing is, you're actually really good at the in-depth logo area. But you're actually just talking about too many other things. So the person doesn't see you as an expert. So they will go to somebody else. But the thing is, what people don't realize is that that in-depth logo area is actually the exact target market size that you want. If you sell to all of them, you're surpassing your revenue targets that you have forecasted. And because it fits that ideal client criteria, you're able to refine your speech a lot better. And that's how you're seen as an expert because you're not all over the place talking about 10 different things. Notice when we spoke earlier, I kind of shied away when they, when they focus too much on digital. That's not my space. Like I tell people, I have three specialties. LinkedIn, sales, and the color yellow. Anything else, I immediately like pause on that conversation because that's not where I focus. That I only focus on those three things. And looking at focus, you're saying that most of your conversation is inbound in terms of like people are reaching out to you. Uh, what are some of those processes in terms of 
different tiers of solutions. Okay, this person will need just this. This person will need something that takes a little longer. What kind of services uh, or how do, you, how do you tier those things? And how do people reach out to you? What's the process of saying, ah, I want to reach out to Jared to, yes, the, pro the, the problem no is taken care of? So I want to I want to talk about products first, then services, because those are two different types of industries. If you offer a product, you could list all your products online for people so that when they reach out to you, they know exactly what they're reaching out to you about. You can even create inbound um, inbound forms for people to fill out before they even get in contact with you. So when they reach out to you, you understand what the context of the 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 call is about or the or the meeting. Because I, I'm not a fan of of having meetings under mysterious purposes, and when it comes to services now, it's different because products you already have stuff. Services now, honestly, like this is my going into my third year being an entrepreneur. And only now I've really found a, a groove in terms of all of my services. In the first year, I would honestly say I was all health skeleton because I was trying to figure out what's the exact thing, get the method, understand how many people required it, understand what's the potential of the market. So if you're a first-time entrepreneur and the services you're providing, don't stress if it is that your pricing not right or your service your service offer not right, still go ahead and sell. You need to sell in order to refine what it is you're offering for the market. And even today, I was on a call talking to a client and I was thinking, I want to make sure I push this up another level. And the client was telling me, yo, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm setting too many high expectations for myself. If you decide to be an entrepreneur and you're offering these products and services, you have a skill set that the customer is not even aware of or they can't do it to the level that you do it at. So if you're doing these services, keep pushing it. When you start interacting with customers, you start to understand what you need to change or add or remove to make it better, whether it's pricing, offerings, et cetera, and become good at it. And if it is that you ever want to get in contact with me, as I tell persons, you can literally pick up your phone and say, um, hey, Google, call Jared Best Michelle, help me sell, and it will dial my number. It's listed publicly on Google. Wow. But or you can I, I like go to my website, that... jaredbestmichelle.com. Okay. I like the fact that you talk and about you not Google liking also. meetings under mysterious circumstances. I think sometimes people meet to organize the second meeting, which will really take care of what it is they have at hand. Do you find yourself, you said it's your third year of being an entrepreneur. Have you found yourself in any situation saying, I think I want to throw this fish back in the sea. This client yes. is not for me. Ha yes. Have you had in, a in situation like that? In my first year of entrepreneurship, the first year of entrepreneurship, I realized I priced the client badly. As in, I underpriced because it ended up, when I realized what needed to be done, it was a lot more work. And I explained it to the client and the client wasn't willing to budge on price. And I said, well, I would drop this because that means I'll literally be doing work for not even cost. Like it would be way under cost based on the amount of work that's involved. But again, only when you're interacting with people, you'll start to realize what it is that you, who it is you don't want to work with and who it is you do want to work with. So I have a couple of red flags with terms of um, clients that I don't work with. Um, I wouldn't say publicly, but if I interact with them or from the initial interaction, I immediately say, I don't think I'm the best fit and I recommend others so I know could work better with them. But again, it's only over time when they actually figure out that, um, that rhythm, what works best for you. And th that's the only hard thing that comes when you're being an entrepreneur. Sometimes at the start, you take on all business. And then as time goes along now, you're more selective with your business because you understand who you like working with. And then more importantly, you understand the impact you can make because nothing worse than taking money from a client and you're under charge for a job and then you, you don't like the client in the first place. That makes it an awful experience. So we want to thank you so much for this experience. Hopefully it wasn't an awful experience. Jared Best Mitchell, sales and LinkedIn nah, trainer. this is a good experience. Yeah giving thanks for that and we want to thank you on as well as everyone who on behalf of the ttt news team who would have tuned into this version of in-depth i'm dk ronsa thank you so much for joining us